Hi, this is David with DSE Productions for SE Rocks. We're here brick by brick with Rough Cut. Great to have you guys back here. I wanted to know how many of you are actually from San Diego? Native born, Chris Hager, San Diego, native born. I'm from San Diego. Kind of. <laughs> Teenage years. Me and Dave are in between San Diego. And how about you two? Where are you guys from? From uh, Lima, Ohio. Freeport, Louisiana. So what was the scene like in San Diego back in the 80s? The same as it is now, which is why we moved up there to L.A. <laughs> hey, we love San Diego, but you know what? Back, back in the late 70s, it just, there, you know, there, if you wanted to do anything, you had to go to L.A. And, uh, you know, a lot of us down here realized that. And around 1980, we started we started migrating up there. And uh, actually, uh, Stephen Piercy and I were the first guys to do it. Matt Thorpe followed with uh, Jakey Lee. Amir came up uh, later. We had some other uh, notable players from down here. There's a lot of there's a lot of history, uh, actually, from players coming up from San Diego, migrating and actually doing well up uh, in the music scene. So, but yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, there were some venues to play, but it's like you, you weren't going to get a record deal down here. That was for sure. <laughs> Did you ever play here at Spirit Club when oh, it was Spirit Club? This was the Spirit. Yeah. This, yes. I did play here when I was like 14. Uh, yeah. This was a Spirit Club. Oh, yeah. I played here, I played here with, uh, with Mickey Rat uh, back in probably 78, 79. And I think I, I played here probably two or three times, you know, uh, throughout the years. Maybe even more. I can't even remember. But... You know, this place, you know, it's just been here forever, man. So what were some of your influences growing up? Uh, well, I, I really liked uh, Judas Priest a lot, uh, UFO, Michael Schenker, that kind of stuff, Scorpions, um, Jeff Beck, I listened to a lot of that stuff right around the time when 
I joined these guys. So I was kind of into the whole dual guitar, harmony solos, like Thin Lizzy and you know, all that kind of stuff aren't me. So how was Rough Cut formed? Well, on that day in a, um, a shell station, well, no, right I'm, after he left Rough Cut. No, Rat. I mean rat. rat. Excuse me. Why are y'all laughing? Y'all asked me to and, answer and, the guy. And, and let Dave tell you, though, I, uh, I met Dave and he had a beautiful Chevelle, Malibu. And a car wash. <laughs> and I told him, I said, Man, I can sing. I can sing high. And he goes, Yeah, right. I did. Uh, yeah, right. Well, listen. And, and, hey, man. And, <laughs> with his deep voice, I said, No, I can hit high notes. He goes, Uh huh, right. Uh huh. He had his, had, his steering, had his hand on the steering wheel. And he went, Right. Who was that chick that worked there? It was uh, dark haired chick. Um, Jackie? Jackie, right. And Jackie says, You got to meet this guy, Dave. So I met Dave, and he's sitting there at the car wash. And I says, listen, you got, I live right behind the car wash. You got to come back and listen to some stuff. I can sing really high. And, and, when I and he goes, it, he goes when I heard yeah, it, right. I didn't believe him. I didn't believe him when I heard it. I was like, yeah, right. Yeah, that ain't you. I, I that's what he said. No, said. That's you. Yeah. Right. I didn't believe him. Anyway, to make the long story short, he or had a looks, keyboard player and he had a bass player. I had a guitar player that quit rap with me. I would have had this bass player at the same time, but he decided to go play with this guy when we all and quit they had a band Rat. Called Salt. Okay. And when I quit Rat, Jake came with me and we got hooked up with this guy and we started Rough Cut. That's how that started. And my biggest remembrance of the whole thing is how, at the time, the we only place that we could find to rehearse was the old Starwood Club that had already burnt down. It was all burnt well, no, out. It was, it was because of uh, John, John Holmes, Holmes is a murder and, thing. And all that, that shit going yeah. on Wonderland. Yeah. And we were in there paying $10 an hour right. to rehearse. <laughs> but, and, but, uh, but it was amazing. And then that, those pe the people that were in that band eventually yeah. went off doing yeah. their other things. Claude Schnell, Joey Cristofanelli, and Jake. Jake. And then we found Matt and uh, Chris, and that became Rough Cut with Craig Goldie, and then we were so fortunate to find a mirror. Right. Uh, Craig, Gold, Craig went to uh, Jafria. Jafria. And so, um, Jake Dave, went to Dave Ozzie. and I, since, since, since San Diego had such star guitar players, Warren. Since San Diego had such star guitar players. No, uh, San Diego had really good guitar players. So David and I decided to come down to San Diego and try to search, and try to search for our new guitar player. So we went to Guitar Trader, which which was uh, on Con what's that on Claremont Mesa Boulevard, and we asked the guy there, "Who's the star guitar player in San Diego?" And they said Amir. So they called him right then and there, and David and I, we went over to. He goes. Amir said, come over to my house. That was like two blocks away. So we went to his house, and we said, let me hear you play. And he played Rough Cut songs. He knew them. And then we asked him if he'd come up to L.A. and join the band right then and there. And he came up. What's really weird is we were doing the Troubadour, and I go, who's this guy? It was Amir. It was Amir. What's this guy doing back then? He was here tonight. Yes. He was here yeah, tonight. I, 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 so that was I was, I was, I was like, why are these guys here? Get them out of the dressing room. Yeah. And he's and in the band. He got in the band, and two weeks after he was in the band, we got signed to Warner. Right. And I'll tell you, was, he, was, he was great. Life. I have to tell you something that for us was like kind of, when they say full circle, 
this is kind of full circle because where it all kind of started at, one night Rough Cut's doing the palace. It's Ozzy and Rough Cut and the circle jerks. And Ted Templeman was in the audience. He saw us. The next day, he's going, what's the problem here? Because their manager's husband is signed to our label. So he makes a phone call. Next thing you know, we're showcasing for Ted at Burbank Studios, and we get signed. Now, 35 years later, we go back to the palace, which is called Avalon now, and did our reunion show, and it was yeah, off the hook. Rock, rock, I re-fell in love with these guys just like that all over again. Me and him, I swear, I, I don't know. Yeah, so... And Matt, Matt and I lived together for 11 years. I, I, if I leave this world, <laughs> if I leave this world, it, 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 it will, the only reason that I'll be bummed is by missing these guys. You ain't That's leaving nowhere. Not. We're going to be here for a long time. So, so why was uh, Rough Cut such a kind of short-lived in the heyday of <laughs> we missed our window. It was, it was that's because why. of the manager. Yeah. We and missed our window. That's we why. waited a long time. A year. To, for Ted to, who to signed the band to produce it. And when we, we wanted him to produce it, he was in the middle of doing Clapton and uh, was David Lee Roth. He was doing Roth after Van And, and also. Um, Lindsey Buckingham yeah. and those two were doing a record together. And so we kind of, Matt was working at Warehouse and he kept saying, we're going to miss the where, we're going to miss the window. Because we we had got signed and waited a year for a producer. You know, I'll tell y'all mm -hmm. something that's it's trivia that a lot of people know about now too. We actually got else. our record deal. Before everybody. Before everybody. Well, I don't mean everybody, but it was like this. We got signed. About Kevin two DeBrow, months later, they uh, Motley Crue gets signed. But about a month after that, Rat gets signed. About two months after that, Quiet Riot gets signed. Yeah, and then they DeBrow all put out their to... records, and we're sitting around waiting for a whole remember year. Remember, DeBro used to yeah. come and see the Rough Cut play, yeah. and he didn't even have Quiet Riot. It was called DeBro. DeBro, that's right. That's right. I remember yeah. that. And I threw him out of the You know the old cliche about timing is everything, it, and it really is true. It really is true, and there were other factors involved as well, you know. But but that was that was a big part of it. Things changed so quickly, you know. MTV changed, and you know uh, we were lucky enough to we were we we were lucky enough to get signed by a major label, but things changed too quickly, and uh, you know. But we got to do some amazing things, you know. We we went out, we we toured all over the world, and we, we had a great time doing it. Uh, so, you know, we did what we did, and when it, was, when it was over, it was over. And here we are again. And one other thing. Thank you, Tipa Gore, for doing the PMRC. You and your husband stick it up your ass. It's because they put a label on heavy metal then. Remember that? It was his wife. You know, the guy got the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize. Uh, it was his wife and fucked rough got up. Well, what, what I'll never forget, I even remember the dates, November 12th, okay? Well, on the 11th, MTV changed their format one day before the record comes out. It went from Motley Crue and all the rock stuff to Easy Lover and Phil Collins and, uh, and, and yeah, and, yeah and stuff like and, that. And no Slaka more Seagull, rock, no, that. yeah, no more rock band videos. We just found out recently from Angelo Curry that Ronnie, Ronnie and him wanted to really produce us yeah. way yeah. before we would have had the record out a year he, he, sooner. Yeah. Right after Holy Diver come out, right. Rough Cut would have come out. And we waited and waited and waited on the producer. Anyways, can't cry over yeah. spilled, spilled milk. Man.
what have you all been doing since uh, Rough Cup broke up? In the room, I mean, we've all done different things, you know. Amir's, uh, Amir was in a band, a little band called Orgy for a while. Matt's a, Matt's a record producer, owns a studio, an engineer. Paul's done a, a number of things. He's in, uh, he's in uh, Raiding the Rock Vault in Las Vegas. I went out and played with Stephen Piercy for three or four years. Uh, we, we've had, we've all done a lot of different things. I owned a business for years. We've all, you know, we've all kept busy, definitely. And uh, it's been a long time coming. But uh, you know, and you know, frankly, we didn't—we really didn't know if this uh, if this would ever happen. But we're we're really glad it did, and we're we're looking forward to seeing what this year is going to bring. You know. Yeah, I know. All this. So yeah, so well, um, what does future hold for you guys? Yeah, well, you know, we, we have an agent and uh, we're in the process of uh, getting shows booked. Uh, we're talking about doing a record. We've already started kind of floating a few ideas here and there. And, uh, you know, we've got some offers. So, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, when you first get back together, it, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a little while to get things together, but we're kind of biding our time, and uh, you know, tonight was a great show. Man. talked about doing something that was more current, uh, more in the direction of Shine Down and a few other bands, also to put the Rough Cut signature on the new stuff. And um, I'm also trying to get all these guys to come in to do Rock Vault because it's a star-studded a, uh, uh, show of, about classic rock, which is, it's great. There's a lot of guys that come and go, Doug Aldridge, Howard Lees, and, and uh, Hugh McDonald, Phil Susan on bass. It would be great to have these guys my closest friends because I haven't really, since we, we departed, I really, and I shared this with Chris, and I haven't had a chance to share it with Matt. We had a band, and it was friendship. And since we parted, all the projects that I've done or anyone else has done, I would think the same thing is that we lost some, we lost some magic that, that has come back by us getting together because I've never felt like I was in a band after we, we, we went our own ways. This was a band and it's the only band I've really ever been into. When I went and stepped in the shoes of Kevin Dubro for one record, it wasn't wasn't right. Well, what's odd is that when you go out on tour with five, four or five guys, you kind of develop a brotherhood. Yes. And for the rest of your life, you it never leaves you. Yeah. And I think probably a lot of bands can say that where, you know, you even though you have your differences when you're in the project at the moment, Later down the road, you realize it's hard. It's like it's like the same as if you went went to war with people. It's like a marriage. You know, you, you 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 have to go through a lot of trials and tribulations being out there. There's a lot of things to get in your way, and a lot of downers and a lot of uppers, and and through all that, you really develop this bond. It never really goes away. It's really a and cool thing, actually, to be in a band. Even yeah, for I me, totally it's, agree with that. it's never been the same with anybody I've ever worked with. Uh, 
on all the projects I've worked with. When we got to back together, it was, it was magic, and it always will be magic because we are one when we're together. And I really miss these guys, and it's never been the same since we left. I really mean that, and yeah. from the bottom yeah. of my heart. You know, it's, it's like Matt says, it's kind of like a, it, it, you, you, you develop a bond and you just, and it, it's like muscle memory. You, you, you kind of never forget it, you know, it's like, you know, and it's, 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 you get back together and it just feels almost yeah. like you've never been apart, you know, it's really, it's really uncanny. It's kind of cool, you know. I wish I would have sang songs like Paul Rogers and stayed down there <laughs> at 64. It's really tough. You know, to hit some of the stuff that I did way back when, and uh, as a singer, and uh, you know, that's why Paul Rogers has, has had such long longevity because it's effortless. When you sing some of the stuff that we've done, uh, when we recorded it, it was like, okay, I'm gonna hit every note and do every lick that <laughs> over sing some of the stuff, and now when we got back together, it's, hey. Don't sing over this part or that part. Let this person have the spotlight. And uh, time really uh, is, is a learning experience of what not to do and what to do. And I can't wait, really, till we get back together and do something that's magnificent, because it will be magnificent. I, I thank God every day that I still have a voice and and that it works, but it's more seasoned than it was then. And I, I, it's never too late to get where you want to go. And I'm I'm very excited just to be a part with these guys because it's like the family's back together. I watched the Alaskan uh, bush people in the brown town. Well, we've got rough cut down here going on. <laughs> and it's great. It really is. Um, it's taken us 30 years to figure that out. And, and I, uh, I'm probably the biggest culprit for it because I listen to too many people. It's like Jim Morrison listened to too many people and ended up in a grave. And people tell you how great you are and how great you are. It's not how great you are as an individual, it's how great you are as a team. And that's what's really great about playing with these guys. It's, it's always been a team and I really miss them all. And I, I really do. Well, I have to say you guys had tremendous energy up there. You guys are looking in good shape. I mean, it's, it's good to see because I know rock and roll could take a toll. And, um, <laughs> and so I wish you guys the best of luck. I, ho I hope you guys come back, come back to San Diego. Oh, yeah. We love you here. Oh, we, you, we, we try to claim you as our own, you know. <laughs> you can do that. You can do that. It's close enough, right? I mean, look, you know, uh, uh, San, as far as I'm concerned, San Diego is, you know, it's, it's my home. You know, San Diego and L.A., man, it's it's Southern California. Yeah, and, we you all know. Play, I played straight ahead sound. I can't tell you how many times. All yeah, I can man. say is I was, born, I was born in Lima, and that's lost in middle America. <laughs> <laughs> and now Eddie Trump and them are doing a thing called Loud in Lima. And I tried to get the band on. It was just a little, a little late to do so. Wow. But, but, yeah, man, you can bet Rough Cut will be back to San Diego. We love you guys down here. You were a great crowd tonight. I really appreciate that. And it's fucking just awesome. one thing to say, rough cut is a cut above the rest. Yeah, <laughs> right. Ryan, this is rough cut, uncut. Yeah.